Hop up in there. Good boy. Hey, hey guys, welcome. Check out this rare situation I got going on here. I have both trucks and trailers loaded with uh, two machines for today, so I just gotta turn and burn, drop that off, come back, switch trucks, go to work. I think that's kinda neat, but we're going back to the big ranch job we worked the last two years during the winter time. We're headed down there right now, so it's pretty decent grade, you guys seen it before. We'll see how the old 3500 does towing down it. I don't think I've towed down it. Towed up it, never down it. Batteries charged for that bad boy. Hope everybody's having a good day. Uh, I want to encourage you guys to check out my Instagrams. Try to get those things bumped up on the followers. Samson underscore Andrew underscore is my personal one or the V Belt and Sun. Check those out, get those numbers up for me, and subscribe to this channel if you would uh, be so kind. Let's go uh, haul some equipment today. see how she does down this big hill hey like I said I haven't towed with this truck down this hill I normally do my 5500 because uh, I got an extra engine brake on it check out this old boy set up I always like those kind of rigs where you got a dump truck towing your mini yeah that's a nice rig there it's bobcat but I mean it's all right and it's a Ford <laughs> a lot of strikes what about this guy though this guy's got a sweet setup here Nice 3500 dual. It's pretty much the same truck I'm driving, except he's got a flatbed on it. Not a bad look. But anyway, this hill right here is one I did the test with the 2020 Ford and 3500 Dodge. And it's kind of steep. So we're going to see how this baby does going down it. Uh, yeah, we just got engine brake. Yeah, third gear seems like it's going to be the trick. Screaming third. It's funny how like the engine brake doesn't really feel like it's as much as what my 5500 is just by itself. Plus, I got that extra switch. So here, check this hill. We'll just let her eat. 3,000 RPM at 50, we'll take her down a step. Where's my little boost gauge? I'll get 100 miles to the gallon right now, boys. Hit the brakes twice. Make it three times here. I'm pretty sure that the new 3500s hold back better than mine does. Last round of the fourth gen. Yeah. <laughs> We'll go down the next hill, I'll get it set up so we can see what the boost level is on the back. Basically, it just held it at red line. The only reason I need to hit the brake is I didn't want it at red line. I wanted it at like 26 to 2700 RPM, but eh. If I didn't care too much about high revving, I could have just let her send and it would have stayed at about 3000, 3100 on the exhaust brake and we would have came down the hill no problem. Exhaust brakes, when you put them on your second gen or whatever, held like like a hundred horse. And that was good back in the day. But now this factory one holds that and some. Let's see what it does down this hill right here. We got her in fourth gear this time. I'll just let her roll. This is holding back 125 horsepower, 127, 130 horsepower right now. Wonder what the hell it was holding back with that super high RPM. 130 horsepower, 2500 RPM. Down a decent little hill, not too bad. I'm just, I tapped the brakes once. I got this old boy set up. Got himself a new bed on his Ford, towing his caboter. Not bad. Here we go, just to see what the heck it holds back at that RPM. 175 horsepower it's holding back at 3000 RPM and third gear. Dang, I think the Ford at like 4,000 RPM is holding back like 16 horsepower. Three on the trailer brake, so it's, uh, I turned it down to two and a half. 
And, well, it did fine. We were really on the trailer brakes and we were running six. Speed is, it, it's climbing slowly. Yeah. The Ford exhaust brake sucks. I don't even think it's an exhaust brake. They just put a different sound on your speakers inside the truck so it sounds like it's doing something with the engine but it's just literally doing nothing it's like a placebo it's terrible don't buy a ford if you're hoping for a good engine brake and if you say they got a good engine brake as you drive forward don't be a sinner stop lying to me unless your ford's got a cummins in it it probably slows down all right why would the road crew do this the shoulder i can pull over on so i can get off of the highway so people behind me can maintain speed they block it with a bunch of those stupid huge cones. Why do they do that? Got this super sketchy bridge. Just go over it nice and easy. Look at how tight that is over there. Then I got this fence right here. Oh man, I hate small gates. I was just gonna think about that yesterday. Title of the video, why does everybody got small gates? Because they got small horses little horses and there's that barn I think they built like a new shop up here and everything since then so this place has happened it's coming together they've cleaned it up a lot since the last owners well the house uh, downloaded as Tavit calls it we normally just call it unloading the machine but some people got weird terminology Let's see if he keeps it between the lines unlike my buddy that hauled that cat for you the other day that he Good job, Emma. I don't know why he likes putting that boom down. Aim for my trailer and put a dent in it with the gravel. He'll watch this later. He'll know. Oops. Trailer all put back together. And uh, we'll get another truck and trailer. I see what they did. They just added a layer of pressure treated like 2x8s to it. So that's what's moving. They just screwed them down and I just broke the screws. It's got some heavy stuff and then it's all made out of steel underneath the wood. And I don't know, maybe they added that so it looked better. Over the last couple days, I've been kind of tiptoeing at the thought of maybe just using this as my next tow rig and then buying a new, you know, out of town dually daily kind of thing when the 5500 needs to be retired. Man, everywhere I go with this thing, there's not enough weight in the truck to pull the trailer up the hill without spinning the duels. So, <laughs> I don't have 5,500. It, there's a difference in weight, obviously. But, this is just, it answered, it's funny how I can answer my own questions by doing this. I say that, like, humbly. But, just out of curiosity, it's like, well, what if I did just buy a new dually? 3,500, get more horsepower, you get a comfortable ride. But then when I get off road like this, like this was a very easy job to get into. And I had to put it in four wheel drive like five times. If I was in my 5500, I wouldn't even consider putting it in four wheel drive, I just would have walked right through it. That's based on just the extra weight of the truck. And 410 gear ratio, ah, it covers everything perfectly. But, or let me say it. The 410 gear ratio covers everything great, but not perfectly. So, I think I would like to stick with a lower gear, like 444 or 488s. We would be a lot happier, because that's where it really counts. Highway stuff's easy, you can just 55, 65, whatever. You don't really need to be able to do 95 like this truck can. So, I'd rather have the low gear for off-roading like that. This car right here has been going 60 and then they'll go down to 45. Ah, no, we ain't gonna hang around with you anymore, dude. 10 and 2. Overkill. That gal was just trying to get somebody in an accident right there. Made it back to the house. I know this isn't gonna be an accurate, you know, comparison because I just towed 30,000 with a 3,500. There is currently 20,000 behind my 5,500 here. Oh yeah, I forgot to wash this bird last night. She's looking good. But I'm gonna throw a thousand pound bucket 
for the skid steer on there and then I'm gonna throw I don't know maybe like a two three hundred pound excavator bucket on there by no means is it gonna be in the same ballpark but uh, just for the heck of it you know making this video just for usability is 5500 it seems to be that I would be more in favor with a 3500 for doing longer hauls but for the shorter hauls the lower gear ratio is nice it's easier to maneuver in smaller spots, but that's obvious. But the extra weight that this truck has, I think that is another key ingredient. It's got bigger brakes, yada yada. It just it, the list goes on. But let's uh, add some buckets to it. This one's a real truck. You got to put this one in neutral and push another pedal. So those of you guys that don't know, that truck has 385 horsepower because it's stock, and then uh, 900 something foot-pounds of torque to go down. It's been a couple years since I bought it, but this truck here has more. But just leave it right there. It should be obvious. But we have the factory exhaust brake and then we have this one here which is little engine brake on the top of the head so i'm thinking we're not going to hit the brakes at all going down that big hill being that uh we're 10,000 pounds lighter on the trailer and well the truck does weigh like 2,000 pounds more than the other truck but you know whatever it'll be close for you cowboys riddle me this is this guy gonna pull you right there he is okay well whatever that's not the question i was gonna ask but it seems like all them stock trailers look how close it is to the bed of his truck it looks like his gooseneck is just gonna smoke it on the slightest little turn how many of you cowboys have lost your truck bed because of that why don't they make those taller up on the neck I just never got that. All right, we're about to go back down that hill. It is, uh, I checked it before, it's around 10% grade. I know it's not an equal comparison, yada yada. I'm just towing to work, but I thought I would make a video. And uh, we'll see what this thing does at 50 mile an hour with a light load. I, I'm get, thinking I'm not gonna touch the trailer brakes at all. I had that one in third gear, we'll put this one in fourth. I might even have to go to 5th, because we're only at 45, 2800. We'll just see what this does. 45 mile an hour. <laughs> That's just exhaust brake, so check this out. It's losing ground. Oh wait, we got both of them on, there you go. That's just exhaust brake. 2800 at 45 mile an hour. Flip that on. And we'll start to lose speed. Yep, shedding speed. Dropped 100 RPM. Let's click it up in the fifth, just see what it'll do. <laughs> I haven't touched the brakes once, which is pretty cool. I'm gonna say gross, right now we're 32, 33. Yeah, probably a little bit more than that. Mid 30s, because I'll be right at about 40 ish, 41 towing the 080 with this truck. So, I think that's pretty good. For towing 20,000 pounds down to 10% grade, I didn't have to touch the brakes once. Gotcha. Shorty gotcha. Pretty good. So, I always question myself should I have bought that other one first and then used it rather than ever buying the stick shift one? start to debate maybe I should go get another stick shift find an 185500 stick shift you know what I'm saying man we'll get the automatic getting an automatic is like retiring pack brake advertised this load leash engine brake of theirs 
uh, basically double your braking horsepower. So I was under the impression that the braking horsepower with the stock exhaust brake was around 150. Well, we saw 175 earlier today, which is really impressive. So let's just keep it simple times 150 times two. We got 300 braking horsepower with this truck versus 170 on the other one. Maybe more at this one. Lower gear ratio gets the torque different. It's only this truck's 444, that one's 410, so you got 10% difference. It's not really a big. So this truck is outstanding. Alright, th this branch is annoying me. I'm gonna get out and deal with this thing right now because it's scratched on my new truck. I happen to have a joke of a chainsaw that it actually rips. It's a joke. $200 Ryobi actually ripped. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Pocket knife. Most everything I got, the tips down. <laughs> We're gonna need to grease both of these. What's that? We gotta grease them both. Too you know much water comes out. I washed this thing last night. thought something had changed back here when I towed out of here with the other setup with a gooseneck it normally eats up into like right here and I took her even wider so I didn't hit this stupid thing because I was always worried about busting a sidewall but you notice this gravel looks a little different right here look at this they hit a rock right here I'm gonna broke their pipe because they put this big old stone there I'm gonna go ahead and take that out of here now so I don't bust it with the trailer next time because I'd bring track tripper tomorrow what are you doing? I'm leaving, Boone. Yeah. These stumps right here, those have the old fence in them. All grown up. We took those down last winter, mulched them all up. They're just a bunch of crap wood. There's nothing, it's not really firewood kind of stuff. There was one oak tree and they, the firewood's still right there. But they wanted those, obviously I didn't want to cut them because they had um, steel in them, but. Yeah, and then we built a pond down here. Pretty cool place. You can't even see my palm. That oh, looks nice. I can see it just over there. Some grazing spot. Maybe I'll wrap this video up. It's been kind of a random uh, cluster of me and my thoughts and my day and the process of getting stuff to the job. Apologize. If you made it this far. Give me a hell yeah, brother, in the comments because I really appreciate you guys. Got me really debating on the new truck a couple years stick shift or auto but yeah 3500 versus 5500 I think to combine a bolt to get a 5500 with the automatic just a brand new truck just clean slate be it done with it I think that would be a good way to go but as far as a 3500 they you can't go wrong with it. Honestly, it's outstanding for what it is. The 5500, pretty dang extent, outstanding as well. It's just a rougher ride, lower gear ratio. But it does, in my opinion, does better for my situation. I like it a lot better. A little bit tougher of a truck. Come on, Gate, what the heck's going on here? There we go. And 
As of right now, I like the automatic. Going for the new one. Oh, I forgot to turn that off. Alrighty, guys, we're gonna close this one out. I'm just down here in the shop, taking a big old inventory check on what I <laughs> gonna need to buy on the charger project. I've dived into this a little bit, but man, I'm glad I got a really good price on it because I need a couple pieces that are gonna be difficult to get. Long story on this, Body Shop kind of did a uh, number on not giving all the parts back. So, yeah. Anyway, in this video talking about, I got to do a little towing with both my trucks in one day. So that's pretty exciting. Basically making these videos to answer questions for people that are possibly in the market to buy a hotshot kind of a vehicle. 3500 by far, you can't go wrong with that. You get a good highway gear you get a good pulling gear off the line with some good weight behind it 410 gear high output isin not a bad combination if you're gonna do a lot of highway miles and some occasional off-road use that's your trick right there but honestly i'm finding myself more and more in situations where i don't really want to be in but i that's my job i go do it anyway is towing on kind of sketchy gravel roads really narrow find myself a four-wheel drive really often that's why i end up not wanting a semi i know people think it's because i i don't know maybe i can't afford it or something like that but um i think my muffle cars in the last couple months could probably bought a semi but anyway i like the four-wheel drive option and i like the lower gear ratio that you get with a cabin chassis truck sacrifice some comfort by not having the soft suspension but you got a better planted vehicle for the off-road use and i just i like the 444 gear ratio that i have on my 5500 it seems to work pretty good except for when you're trying to do a little highway racing you always run out of gearing i don't do that somebody i know but i i don't know if the obstacles and situations i find myself in towing uh really computes on camera for you guys to see but it's usually not in the most fun spot uh if it gets any worse i typically will just unload the machine and track it in from there rather than try to hurt some of the gear pop some tires you pop a tire you pretty much cost your whole load you pop two tires you're working overtime to make up for your mistake and you bend an axle break some brake lines off rip something out from undercarriage not really ideal but uh I don't know if you're in the hot shop market i always like to say if you're going to be in the market for something do your research ahead of time before you actually show up to buy it like let's say you want to buy this truck right here you show up to whoever the hell's selling you this truck this truck might not be perfect for you but the guy that's trying to sell it to you he's probably going to try and make it sound like the best truck that'll fit every one of your needs because he wants to sell the truck find the information you need before you go out and buy the stuff that way when you show up and be like mm. What gear ratio? 354? Oh, I don't want to tell with that. No, nope, I'm good. Pass. Next truck. Simple stuff like that. You want to know your information before you get there. That way, you're not caught off guard. But we're going to end this video. I just hope that I can spread some of the information that I've learned throughout my process of just... I couldn't figure it out, so I just pretty much just went and bought whatever I thought was going to work. And uh, it's worked out pretty well, but there's some things that I'd like to change. So when it comes time down the road, new 5500. We'll see you guys in the next one. Thanks for watching. Uh, if you made it this far in the video, comment. Cowboy. Yeah,